गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इलेवेंथ स्टैंडर्ड पोइट्री सेक्शन द 2.5 पॉइंट व्हिच इज पोएम नोज वर्सेस आईज बाय विलियम काउपर सो लेट अस फर्स्ट सी द आईज ब्रेकर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर पोएम इज अबाउट सो कंप्लीट द फॉलोइंग वेब द हेल्प ऑफ द एडजेक्टिव यूज टू डिस्क्राइब आईज एंड नोज इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट टू आर डन फॉर यू सो आईज कैन बी ब्यूटिफुल आईज कैन बी discerning eyes can be mean eyes can be charming pleasing and hypnotic so next is the nose the nose can be sharp by the sheep and pointed by the sheep then it can be very sensitive to the smell and discerning means look at the person looking at these adjectives you could actually have some kind of idea from the person when i say the eyes are mean it is not that the eyes are mean it means that the person is uh, some kind of uh, intriguing person okay hypnotic eyes means there is something attractive in him charming and he means is very beautiful and all those things so let us see the next one given below are some words from legal terminology used in court affairs discuss and complete the table accordingly so these words are all related with something to do with the law so let us understand those so the words are given to you with the description the first is affidavit which means a written statement confirmed by oath or affirmation for use as evidence in court so next is argument a state statement that, that could be one or many used to convince people that your opinion is correct usually in done front of the court uh, one uh, from the both parties this particular things keeps on happening to convince the judge and the people that the thing his opinion or her opinion is correct next is consent to give permission approval or to agree to a particular theory or evidence or a particular statement counsel it means to advise or to take any action which is usually given by the court uh, to the person or the lawyer or a barrister judgment the final decision passed by the judge after checking the evidences trial meeting in the court to hear both the sides of the case so this usually happens in the court when the judge and the lawyer calls both the parties and uh, entire scene is created where they um, with every uh, what is a chance they try to prove their statements in front of the judge so what it the decision given by the judge or jury at the end of the trial okay so it's actually the decision whichever which takes which helps to take the final judgment contempt of court a criminal offense of disobeying the instruction by the judge or court in the particular trial so next is notice which means a legal statement in form of letters to inform the person or people this is actually done when a particular person is going to take some kind of action against legal action against a institution or an institution wants to take a legal action because he's broken broken the contract or not listening to the verdict of the court and so on stay order a legal statement which objectifies or prevents a person or people to take action so the next is Name the five sensory organs and provide phrases, idioms, proverbs related to them. One is given to you to turn a deaf ear. This is related with the ear. It means to not pay any attention. To follow your nose means to follow your instincts. In the blink of the eye means in an instant very quickly. In poor taste means not good. Then to keep in touch to be in contact. So very good morning students. Today we shall be discussing about the poem 2.5 that is nose versus eyes. Now the title suggests it's a very funny poem but the poem is not funny but it gives a very serious message. So let's begin. So let us see first some information given about the poet. So William Cowper was one of the most popular 18th century English poets and composers of hymns. So here the name is William Cowper usually it is pronounced as William Cooper but it is William Cowper and not Cooper now he was one of the most notable 18th century poets and composers of hymns so technically when we read the word hymn it is actually it is an as h y m n s it is not hymn 
but it is hymns so hymns are actually religious songs or poems so william cowper wrote religious songs his poems deal with nature and everyday life so this particular poet was a poet of nature and who liked to discuss about everyday life he is quite aptly described by samuel to coleridge as the best modern poet of his time so samuel to coleridge was a well known poet of his times and he referred this person that is william cowper as the best modern poet so though he studied jurisprudence he later admitted that he was not much inclined to the legal professions so jurisprudence you mean so a poet studied law means he was a lawyer he usually studied law he was going to become a lawyer he later admitted that he was not much inclined to the legal profession means somewhere our poet was not happy with the legal profession and he was uh, unhappy with its working he wrote happy is the one who knows just as much of the law to make himself as a little merry now and then with the solemnity of the judicial proceedings so he says that the person will be much more happier if he does not understand the working of the law so nose versus eyes is a satire on the judiciary system now what's a satire a satire is a poem which gives a deep message a very serious message but in a comical manner it is it also mocks on the stone blind justice in a humorous manner emphasizing upon the lack of empathy and common sense so this entire process of judiciary system is some way uh, it appears to be a, j- a joke for him he try to mock him mock it means he is trying to complain about how the blind justice is served but in a humorous manner so let us begin with the poem nose versus eyes now see this particular entire poem is actually a mock a mock means it is making fun of the judicial system but in a it's a serious topic but in a very funny manner so between nose and eyes a strange contest arose the spectacle set them unhappily wrong the point in dispute was all the world knows to which the said spectacles ought to belong so this entire problem was between the nose and the eyes so the nose and the eyes were fighting over a silly thing a silly thing uh, which means that the spectacles belong to whom whether it belong to the nose or it belong to the eyes so the answer to this particular question i will not give now but i'll give after the end of the poem so all of you clearly know the spectacles belong to whom but let us see how judiciary works and how the laws work in a very stupid manner uh, stupid i may say because how you will be quite uh, unhappy with the end of the poem that's why i'm saying it's a stupid way see between nose and eyes a strange contest arose the spectacle set them unhappily wrong so this entire problem this entire thing was between the nose and the eyes and the ownership of the spectacles they wanted to know who the spectacles belong to so the tongue was a lawyer and argued the cause with a great deal of skill and a wig full of learning while chief baron ear sat to the balance the laws so famed for his talent is nicely discerning so now you know that in a particular uh, case of justice when the particular entire things goes to the court there is a lawyer who defends uh, both the sides and there is a judge who decides the case who gives the decision so the tongue here is the lawyer of the uh, knows and chief baron ear ear is the church so here all of them are sitting uh, together now how is the judge sitting he is wearing a wig a wig full of learning a wig is actually a particular uh, type of head covering usually in the olden days the judges used to wear this white color long hair uh, like structure on the head to show that uh, they are the judges so the tongue was the lawyer of the knows while the ear was the judge so in behalf of the nose it will quickly appear and your lordship he said will undoubtedly find that the nose has had the spectacles always in wear which amounts to position time out of mind so the nose is saying that uh, lordship lordship means 
to the ear he is saying dear lord i am uh, undoubtedly we all know that the nose uses the spectacles so it is not for the eyes it is for the spectacles are especially for the nose actually we know that if you count the entire time while the spectacles are on your face where do the spectacles sit they sit on the nose then holding the spectacles up to the court your lordship observes they are made with a straddle as wide as the ridge of the nose is in short designed to sit close to it just like a saddle so if you look clearly at the spectacles he's saying look carefully at the spectacles so if you look carefully at the these spectacles you can see there is a straddle straddle means this particular part okay so this particular uh, what do you say this particular part is known as a saddle the saddle this particular word saddle look at the saddle carefully it has a ridge which sits perfectly on the nose so this particular part is actually made for the nose the spectacles for the nose and now saddle is also a particular object which is over the horse which uh, people used to sit on so in the similar manner this saddle is used for the nose for the spectacles to sit perfectly on the nose so we can clearly say that the spectacles belong to the yes belong to the nose again your lordship again your lordship a moment suppose this that this is a case that has happened and may be again that the visage or countenance had not a nose pray who would or who could wear spectacles then so the uh, tongue is actually very a uh, good lawyer he is trying to somehow present uh, all the evidences for the nose and he is trying to tell how the nose is the owner of the spectacle so he says that believe that just for example that a particular person does not have a face okay or he has a face and but no nose so where would the spectacle sit if a particular person has all the things on his entire face he has eyes he has a mouth he has ears but he does not have a nose where would the spectacle sit then how would the spectacle sit there so i clearly want to say that the spectacles belong to the nose on the whole it appears and my argument shows with the reasoning the court will never condemn that the spectacles plainly were made for the nose and the nose was plainly intended for them so he is trying all his might to make the sure that the entire decision will go ac according to him so he's saying if you uh, look at all the evidences that i have given to you that the structure of the entire spectacle how the nose is important then the saddle which is used to sit on the nose and uh, how the entire time look at the entire time while the person is wearing a particular uh, spectacle look at the time where the spectacle is it is on the nose and not on the eyes this is what he is trying to tell he is giving this all evidence so he is saying that it clearly appears sir that the spectacles are made for the nose and the nose are the one who should have them then shifting his side as a lawyer knows how he pleaded again in behalf of the eyes but what were his arguments few people know for the court did not think they were equally wise so the lawyer the same lawyer then took the side of the eyes but he, the pleaded means the way he proved his evidence were less known less known means they were not enough and some people every people uh, all the people knew exactly that the spectacles belong to whom but looking at the arguments looking at the evidences looking at the proofs nobody dared to speak about them like clearly we have seen many a times the court gives foul decisions uh, decisions like fools the case is crystal clear but somehow the person who is uh, not intended to get the punishment gets the punishment okay he is set free so the end everybody knows entirely from the beginning you and me also knew that the spectacles clearly belong to the eyes but here the case is different looking at the proofs and evidences from both the side it clearly seems that someone is going to lose and someone is going to win but looking at the lack of the evidences presented by the side of the eyes we know that now the decision is going to be given by the side of the nose so his lordship decreed with a grave solemn tone decisive and clear without one if or but that whenever the nose put his spectacles on by daylight or candlelight 
eyes should be shut so with a what do you say with an official order the lordship the uh, lordship means the church the ear gave the decision according to the nose he said that the it is clear that this particular spectacle belongs to the nose and not to the eyes but there is a twist in this that whenever the nose will put the spectacles on by daylight or that by candle that means by day or by evening or night the eyes will always be shut so this eyes will always be shut here means that justice is blind justice does not belong or justice does not go along with the emotion it only believes in proofs and evidences so if anything which cannot be proved inside the court is false for justice or the court so here i take your leave in the next lecture we shall be discussing about the brainstorming and the critical appreciation of the poem